It is six o'clock, and we will call this Brunswick City regular scheduled committee meeting for Monday, July 15th, 2024, to order. Can you please stand for our invocation and pledge of allegiance? We will bow our heads, please. Father God, we thank you now for this opportunity to come before you once again. We thank you now for the people that have gathered. We ask now, God, that you would grant your mercy upon each and every person and grant your grace uh, to this Dios as we proceed to conduct the business of the city. Not just the business of the city, but all of those that are in this room on tonight, as well as those that are not, that are watching on Facebook. God, we ask now, God, that you would just govern our minds accordingly, that we will be about your business and do the will of the people. We ask that you commit us and allow us to in grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, visible, liberty, and Before we get started on tonight's meeting, we um, basically had a horrific act of political events happen over the weekend. I think for all of us up here on the DI, uh, we are reminded of the simple word in our Pledge of Allegiance, indivisible, um, that no matter uh, political bent, no matter our religious affiliation or cultural back that we should do all we can to seek community with each other, to seek love with each other, and to seek connection uh, with each other. We are uh, saddened by the loss of life um, that happened uh, at a political rally this weekend, but also the loss of life that happened in our city where we lost a 16-year-old child. And far too often, violence used to resolve our problems instead of speaking to one another and loving one another. So. Hoping um, that not only us as a community, but us as a nation can do that just a little better. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the approval of our agenda for the adoption of the July 15, 24 regular meeting agenda. Any addendums or subtracts? Mr. Mayor, do you have one of them to our agenda this evening? Yes, sir. Well, as number eight under city attorney's items, I'd like to add for approval for transit uh, memorandum of understanding with Blaine County. We all for that as a motion here. First, do I hear second? Second. Here in the first and the second, all those in favor by the usual sign of aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Hearing none, the agenda is amended. Any additions or subtractions? We have a uh, change from the city attorney. Uh, we'll have asked somebody from EOS to offer that as a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we refer item number seven of the municipal judge service agreement until the first in August. Here in the first, do I hear second? Second. Here in the first and the second, all those in favor of the usual sign of aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Hearing none, the motion passes and the item is deferred. Any the additional addendums or subtract. Hearing none, we'll open it for a motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. Mayor, motion to adopt the agenda as as amended. Hearing the first, do I hear a second? Second. Hearing the first and the second, those in favor show by the usual sign of aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Hearing none, the motion passes. We will move on to public comment. City Clerk Atkins. Angie Jatter. Angie Jetter. There, Angie Jeter or Jetter here. Julia Martin. Okay. That is someone with the same name. I was waiting for your twin to come in, former commissioner. <laughs> Natalie McNeely. Yes, ma'am. It is good to see you, Miss McNeil. Thank you for being with us this evening. Uh, 
I live 3320 North Cleveland, Brunswick. Um, I have a concern and complaint, and I don't know which out the other, but this, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, the day after the 4th of July, apparently a permit was given uh, to a group of people to block off North Cleveland Street, where I live. And my concern is this time is the first time that they secured a permit, but they do that quite often. They they have gatherings quite often. But this time, this largest one that they've had, so I've been down there, and they've been doing this now for about years. Um, my concern is that in the neighborhood, none of these young people who are there lives in that neighborhood. Everybody on that street, they're either retired or senior citizens. So, and I think what really got me this time, sometimes I go, I go along with it as long as, okay, but I was blocked out. I could not, I did not have access to my place. I left home, came back, there was a roadblock. You know, they quartered the, the entrance there on 4th Street, right on the corner. So then when I asked someone, open up to allow me to get in, when I got in, by the time I got to the end of my property, there was a barricade. So barricade here on 4th Street, here, excuse me, corner of Lincoln, and I live right, okay? So, like I said to them, I need to be able to have access. I need to be able to access to my because it was closed off. They were not allowed cars in. So, if there's an emergency or anything, what do I do? What do I do? And even though I, they opened, I parked on the side by seven o'clock that evening. If I wanted to back out, I couldn't back out because, you know, they say block party, but they take North Cleveland, they take up Lincoln, they take up Sefton, and this time they were strung up in both directions on 4th Street were tents up. Uh, then there's the noise, okay? There, there, there's the noise. Um, and my question is, is there an ordinance thing in place where someone come out before they issue a permit to see exactly where it's going to be because that house on that corner cannot house no more than three cars. So it can't house no more than three cars and it's up and down. It's up, up and down North Auburn, Lincoln, four feet across 4th Street. You see what I'm saying? And um, I don't know what time they're supposed to start, but we go last is what got me up about 7 30 that morning you know the thump so i walked to the door and they'd already set up during the night and uh and they were there until what about 10 30 11 o'clock at night and that's a bit too much you know it's too much and you wake up mornings and you have trash in your yard and then they also did the fireworks they did the fireworks so my thinking is no one that there lives within that vicinity. Why are they being allowed to have it there? The owner of that house on the he doesn't live there. It's a it's a empty house. He doesn't live there. So he doesn't I guess he has no concern. His thing was when I asked him last year of it, he said, Well, I give them consent, but I only ask them to clean up, leave it clean. Well, their cleaning is they take the oyster shells, they take the fish, you know, uh, guts, and I'll throw it across the street on my side. So what? The, <laughs> at any given time, I can walk my front yard, and there's a bit running across in my yard. You see, I've been called um, cold horses last year. And he came out and he looked and he was saying a portion of it 
belonged to the city and the other was private property, but not even keeping that clean belongs to the city. So it's there. You see what I'm saying? So my concern is, is there anything that can be done because with a crowd that large, they need to be at either Seldom, Orange Park, Coffin Park, place that can accommodate them and the vehicle. So, you know, rather than, and you know, not some offering to pay me to in my yard. No, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not that. So what is it that you all can do? Is there anything that you can do? And at the end of the evening, they had the firework display. So it's it's getting to do it quite often, usually at least twice a month, if not twice a month. Yeah. So. Ms. Medina, I um, that you've had comments and questions with certain commissioners uh, on the DI, so I want to open uh, for those who you've had conversation with or those who maybe spoke with uh, of the organizers of that event uh, to speak. Um, Ms. <clears throat> Neely, first yes. I want to apologize for any inconvenience that that permit has caused you. Secondly, I want to thank you for coming to share your concerns and possibly and all offering us solutions for our manager and her staff to do a better job at to ensuring that when we give these events that we look at crowd control, public safety. So again, um, I'm sorry on behalf of the as well, I know I can't speak on behalf but as the commissioner. Uh, that you had to endure this and hope that from this, your public comment will offer some support, some things that we need to research and do better. Can I just show you this? I know that our, our uh, senior citizens and elderly should not have to endure this. I know I myself, a commissioner, as a result of you calling me, I did go take a visual actually in traffic on 4th Street. So I do understand exactly where you're coming from and what was going on. And it is unacceptable. As you said, have spoken that we do have green spaces. And I have another thing, because my, my thinking is, when you issue permits like that, do you notify the people within the in the neighborhood or something so that you would you can at least be aware that it's, it's going to take place? I will turn that question over to city manager. That's something we do when we uh, approve these kinds of permits. Uh, we don't have a process of notification. We normally just put in <laughs> information. Um, we will look at that process going forward. I did speak to um, some of the organizers, and I told them that they have to be considerate of the residents that live in their homes with the noise. So I did all those suggestions that you mentioned, such as Liberty Ship Park, mm -hmm. Mary Ross Park, and, well, those were the only putting recommend Orange Park or Howitson because those are near residential um, Yeah, but this is residential. No, I'm saying the two that I've recommended for oh. them moving forward is Liberty Ship and Mary Ross because it's not near residential such as Orange Park or Howard Coffin Park. So I'm telling them to try not to plan an event to that magnitude near where people live. So that's what I'm saying when you say green space, just suggesting parks for them to go to. Mm. Okay, saying you were telling them not to do anything in Coffin Park or Orange Park because of residential? So as you stated, to just for them to do their events at other locations, 
So when I told them, you know, they have to be mindful of when they're planning events where people's homes are. So my suggestion to them was to do events in locations where people do not live. So Howard Coffin Park, you do have Windsor Park and then Orange Park, you do have homes in Orange Park because it's a community park. So what I said moving forward, locations such as Liberty Ship Park and Mary Ross, which are not near residential homes. But I understand that too, but what I'm thinking is you keep parks. So even if it's in a residential area, the residents are aware that it's a park. And if it's right. a park, there's the fact that people are going to be over there in the park. A little different from where I am, just residential. Right. See what I'm saying? So I mean, if you can give that to those over there, then kind of expect the same where I am. That yeah, Ms. Okay. Ms. McNeely, I, I think she's saying is moving forward. I think she, uh, Commissioner Roll is saying having the event where they had this year right. is unacceptable. And so it doesn't need to be there any longer, which okay. is what we're going to work to guarantee. She had a conversation with the organizers of this event and have informed them that next year they need to be looking to the two suggestions that she put forward because they are in no way close to oh, kind yeah. of residential. Okay, so are they telling they only do it once a year? Because they do it like maybe twice a month. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I haven't had a conversation with them, but okay. I'm I'm happy. To, that's what okay. my my final word will be. I will have a conversation with those put on this event. I'm not sure who that is. Happy to have a conversation with the owner of the home as well, uh, as it pertains to us giving out a permit for that event. Um, I, it is something that it sounds like the will of the commission and the will of myself for us to sure that we don't give that permit any longer in that residential area so it doesn't happen. Uh, the off the off time events that they have, let us talk to our police and have a conversation about what we do when things come up to make sure you're not dated with those items. Okay. okay. Right. So, suggestion. There is no there are noise variances. Okay. I mean there are noise no ordinances. Okay. Call the police. Talk to the talk to support it. If they are if they are uh, doing the that is going outside of those orders, report it. You have that right as a citizen. Um, you have the right to have peace in your room and not to have to hear everybody else's noise music. But if it's something that is um happening all the time and it is disturbing, right? That area. Report. Well, they should have it logged down at the park. Yes, because ma myself, along with some others, complain. Call that non missing yes, number. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. But well, we will take behind that and get back with you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you, Miss McNeely. Mayor, um, the young lady that would like to speak, she didn't say in time to. To speak tonight, though, she would know, would like to know if you'd let her speak. I I think my question would be, do you come from out of town and not able to make it back to the next meeting? It's about something happening this evening. Okay. All right. Come forward. We usually give about two minutes. We don't usually this, but yeah. I apologize. I not realize that and didn't realize you guys were tackling this until I saw it in the newspaper Saturday. No worries. Um, I'm Paul Cowan. I'm with Bike Walk Golden Isles. I think I have chatted with most of you about our group. We're a citizens advocacy group working to make our area safe for people who walk, run, stall, and, uh, and roll. And we just want to voice our support for uh, the MLK Altama Corridor Rail Project that is on the agenda tonight. Um, we feel this is a, a great next step in expanding the old multi-use uh, trail from where it already begins on 4th Avenue, eventually getting to the college and hopefully all the way to Fletzy someday. It's a great way to improve pedestrian cycle and cyclist uh, accessibility and safety. And uh, 
One day we hope to promote this corridor as an updated route for the East Coast Greenway. Um, actually, we've been recently awarded a grant by AARP for a bike audit of this actual corridor. And I'm excited about the opportunity, hopefully, to use this new construction as this is what can be done for the rest of the area. Um, we're always happy to lend our help on this project or anything else that deals with cycle pedestrians. And um, we applaud Brunswick commitment for your streets to all. So, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Bad. Thank you so much. Mayor, that concludes comments. I think, I think she, she can. I'm sorry, can you come back for us? Can you give us your name uh, and more time organization? It's Savelle Cowan. That's A-V-E-L-C-O-W-A-N. I've got a hard one. And I'm Mike Walk Golden Niles. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. We will now move on to the other portion of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Ryan Moore, CEO of the Golden Niles Development Authority, to put an update for us. Thank you for being with us this evening. Commission, thank you all for allowing me to be here tonight. I do have a... Uh... Well, Ms. McDuff pulls that presentation up, hopefully. Um, the Golden House Development Authority did recently end our fiscal year, and we were able to report out results. Ms. McDuffie and Commissioner were with us that night, and. Um, y'all's support and, and all of our meetings and being involved and miss mcduffie if we could come give a, a similar presentation not i uh, apologize to commissioner say miss mcduffie that you'll have to hear it twice but it saved me creating another one so thanks for y'all's time and allow me to be here okay so this past year has been really busy for the golden Isles development authority uh some no achievements on slide two if i could miss um, we did cut ribbons on different facilities, both MAP and American Harvest. And we talk about these things a lot of times, we get into the details. You're going to get more detail tonight than you, than you might want to hear. I'll try to make this quick, but uh, we, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. Stop me if you have any questions. But just as an instance of, of what goes into these things, MAP Internet came to us two and a half years ago and said, hey, we've outgrown our facility. We've got more nations than we can accept we need some more space and it doesn't exist in Glenn County. We worked with them to identify other locations and they came to us and said, look, we, we appreciate it, but we've got to move quickly. We've got board members over the United States and particularly in Atlanta that are looking at our business model saying, hey, these things are coming out of Savannah. We should just move the whole thing to Savannah. And I don't have to tell you how big of a loss that would happen international is one of the top top nonprofits in the world by various rankings, really a strong and a great community and we're happy to have them. So we, we got big and created a plan where we put together their engineer, their architect, their owners, rep GC, put the team in place, started on building them a facility. And the original was for the development authority to own that action to give them time to finish their fundraising, but gave them an out. If they weren't able to raise the fund, thought they would, we could own it and we would just lease it to them or, or work something out. But we, we put that stop gap. They were so successful in their fund, they raised the funds in about 18 months before the building was constructed. We never had to own it. They Now it's on the ground and they've hired 10 or 15 more 40,000 square foot facility. If you've not seen it, Lenco across from the airport and really well done, uh, really integrates well with the facility. You wouldn't know it was an expansion if you just drove it. So we're really excited about that one. Second one, America's Second Harvest, that was a building that we, and just luckily through conversation, learned that just that we're, we were leasing the building to needing to grow as well, as and Second Harvest was. So just by way of talking to people in the area and understanding where things were moving, we were able to find a solution for the tenant that was in the building and have them sell us the building by us and then us sell it to America's Second Harvest. Per the grant requirements that uh, America's Second Harvest got a grant, federal grant, we're going to end up owning that for five years to comply with the grant program. So that's another one that 
uh, took a lot of course trading and, and, and had a, move, a lot of moving parts, but it's around now and what they've done with the building is fantastic. So we're really happy about that. Two groundbreakings that happened. Uh, Bucky, everybody's aware, you've seen that going vertical open uh, first quarter in the first quarter next year. That's 200 jobs, $50 million in rent, and their sales taxes on average in store are about $50 million a year, not including this. So easy math, that's half dollars to lost, lost, and e-lost, 0.5 total every year as soon as they open. So we're really excited about that. Um, significant investment. They pay really well. The jobs are quality jobs. Um, and they'll get busy here in a second. So we hope to cut the ribbing on, ribbon on that first of next year. Another one that's uh, really interesting to city in particular is Jared Parr Marine. Jared's headquarters is in our industrial park by the airport, which is the McBride Industrial Park. Uh, they make components for navies in the world. Their, their core component here in the States is technology that goes into aircraft carriers. And they're one of only a few people, if the only one that can do that. So their needs were uh, a matter of national significance. And so we've been working on that for quite some time. That project predated me. They were before I got here and we've shown them seven different uh, solutions and, and we've, we've done it all. And ultimately they decided, look, let's expand here. Let's commit to Brunswick. We've got the best team in the United States. We're not gonna find these people anywhere else. So they're expanding, they're building a hundred thousand foot, investing about $50 million, adding people. And while that's even more important city is they'll vacate the big ugly building, the big ugly building at Liberty Harbor. So the big warehouse that looks vacant and then is past its, past its prime, uh, they're actually still operating in there. There's 50 people that pay in that warehouse building components for ships. They'll vac vacate that some next year, late next year, once they've built the new facility and moved all of their equipment over. So hopefully that'll be a list to, to allow for some more and things to happen at Liberty Harbor. So a day's work or good seven years of work and we're glad to have that one behind us. They've broken ground and, and I mean, moving forward expeditiously. Under contract, we've got 70 acres at I-95 at 42 on the west side of I-95. Had that property for quite some time. We currently have contracts for uh, a 500 square foot building that'll be immediately half occupied by a distribution company. We'll have 250,000 square foot of spec space. That's more spec space than's ever existed in Glen ever. That's the biggest building, big and biggest industrial building in Glen County. But we'll have 200,000 square foot of speculative space for more companies to come. That'll break ground in, I'll go ahead and tell you, August 9th. So we haven't released that yet, but we'll have a groundbreaking, obviously, to have you guys with us. Um, so we'll break on that August 9th. And then the 15 remaining acres in that piece of property is under contract, separate group that will build a 60,000 square distribution center and hire about a hundred people. So hopefully we can break ground things get going as they are. We should break ground on those before the end of the year and it'll look totally different. We have 650 acres that's probably owned next to that. So we're, we're still working on the bigger property, but the good news is the first industrial building in the trade park, tech park development. And hopefully that'll be the thing of many more. Just uh, things that we've done that, that do have a community impact that, that take a lot of our time and we're certainly very passionate about that we don't get to share very often. We do it in small business through our Share the Future grants. Through it in our office is, is very good at getting out community and find who's, who's moving, who's space, who, who needs investment, invest in three different things, production equipment, placemaking, and educating, uh, educating activities. So we invested 60,000 this year. We've upped the budget this year to $80,000 and we already have more demand than we have dollars. We'll be making, the board will be making a decision at the next board meeting to fund those projects, fund those projects. But um, most of those projects have actually been in the city. Thinking about Norwich Street in particular has been a major recipient of that. Uh, six or seven different grants that we've given along that course to various businesses along Norwich. So proud of that. But just the things that, that don't see in that are Byron Tea, for example. They're now on Reynolds Street. If you've not seen our new tea shop in Brunswick, you ought to check it out. It's very interesting. They came to town two years ago and we're looking all around Glen County and Sherry starting with them and really wants them to be in downtown Brunswick. They had the opportunity to do a production space somewhere in the warehouse out. I mean, she said, no, you don't want to do that. You got to come to down on this. This is where it is. And she was able to find a space and get up and running. Uh, 
so we we don't necessarily any in that but we spent a lot of time she went to Macon and saw their footies and and really worked that one really hard and proud of that and I've got a team behind me that's that I'm Mackenzie Padgett whom you, you probably know Gary Pruitt so um their work tonight is why they're not here uh, we also moved downtown or moved to a new location in downtown but we're successful in identifying space for the Lucas Center which is the College of Georgia's Entrepreneurship Center on the docket for years we've been trying to identify how to get them in downtown because what they really is phenomenal uh, they've served over 600 entrepreneurs i think to date and the two they've been open maybe a little longer uh, really a fabulous program they do great work they are up and running in their downtown location which is our building so we share our multi-purpose space back with them and they have mentorship incubation and acceleration and camps that go in that space so we were really proud to, to to make that happen and pick that box that needed to happen uh we needed them in down supporting our entrepreneurs so i'm very proud of that accomplishment very proud of our space it's been please stop by and see us anytime and then on the workforce side uh workforce side uh we reached over three residents in person with the keep glenn russage so keep glenn running is our marketing program aimed at parents and students uh to just help students better understand the opportunities that exist here in glenn county the jobs available how to get those jobs where to how to connect our technical college our career academy etc so we've been successful at driving that that's just in person in total we're we're with about fifteen thousand people between social media and uh in-person events just to drill down you can go ahead got ahead of myself yeah so that's our ribbon cuttings ground um there we go so the authority works off of a two-year strategic plan. uh it's updated annually and we have okrs which is which is objectives with key results you'll see the priorities there. so the first uh priority for us is new business attraction sorry i thought it got there. uh so we spend quite a bit of time outreach to new industry new folks uh, trying to come to the to the community and just some key results from this past year jared i've been uh jb2 and the jobs that are created but you'll see the odds there but just drilling down into how we accomplish that our, our our major audiences for business attraction are the state of georgia project managers so that's uh the state of georgia and our youth partners georgia power emc ecg we work with them uh when they identify a an industrial user king we also work heavily with site selection consultants and brokers and a lot of time and outreach for that event as well we do events here in town but town as well we present a trade show uh georgia economic developers association economic development council and then very pinpointed events uh, elsewhere around the community we also bring those folks down as often as we are able. One of the big ways that is through the RSM, we bring about 50 project managers or consultants to town and spend some pretty time with them, uh, showing them benefits of being here. Next priority is business attention and attraction. I'm sorry, talent attraction and development. Is out of order. Come on, uh, yeah, business retention and attention. So this, again, this is a lot of this falls on Sherry Pruitt. Uh, she is out making, creating relationships and growing those relationships with all of the various uh, business in the community, small and large, and you'll see some outcomes there. Uh, one thing that I didn't even mention in kind of the key results from this year, if you've not seen or talked to Willinius Wilhelmsen about what they're doing at the Brunswick Colonel's Island facility, it's simply amazing. They've invested about $160 million. They built 11 buildings up 70 acres of concrete for processing machinery and that will be the nicest best equipment machine or equipment processing facilities in the nation so there were volvo caterpillar kubota all the big names to now bring that through the port of brunswick what was a result of the gpa having to move all of the roll on roll off bulk, bulk traffic out of savannah down this way so we're going to continue to see that growth that's one of the biggest things at the port an impact standpoint for us in a long time and we're starting to see some of those investments and some of those companies come so quite a bit of activity and uh and and certainly something we'll be proud of i know uh mr mcduffer can hopefully to put together a port tour with the sister soon and hope everybody can join us to see some of that 
for the million. Um, next slide, if you would. Talent and attraction and develop. So going back three years ago, we partnered with Chamber and funded a, a conference study that we call the workforce or talent and strategy. Um, it was a three-year plan. We've since added some years to that and added some things, but we went through and we executed. And what I liked about this, Carl Vincent Institute came, helped us put the, pl the plan together. During COVID and doing community outreach wasn't easy, but we did it anyway. Engaged community for about a year, had a really good plan, but it was it was tangible. And we went through and knocked out the majority of that plan. For the first two years, we completed 90% of what we said we were gonna do. Um, so we're really proud. It's a good partnership with the chamber, and it's still on. One of the big things in that was the hiring of some to manage this plan. Uh, we were a partner with the school system, uh, the technical college, and the development authority all together our funds, and we hired a CEO for the career academy that also acts as the talent and strategy liaison manager community. So Brian Weiss, if you've not met, doing a great job, and he. He wakes up early and goes to bed thinking about workforce development, exactly what we needed. Next slide. Marketing is a big of what we do. Um, you know, over the last three years, we've been seeing 50 to 100% increases in our engagement on social media, and we continue to do that. Um, Tag. Uh, these these OKRs are supposed to be actional, and they are. So we we again want to double our page visits to our property pages. We didn't get there, but we got a 25 increase, so we're still very happy about that. Uh, but social media generally doubling our traffic year over year, and we do that through target advertising, but also campaign engagement and partnerships with others in the community. Make sure that we're sharing our message. So very very proud of the brand that we have and the mark we do. Site development, this is the happens on the front end and, and don't always see the, the results until somebody builds a bill. This is quite a bit of our work. Georgia has a Georgia Ready for Accredited Development Program, and that's a certific program that says that your property, the property that you have privately owned, is certified for development, meaning when somebody comes in, they don't have to go back and check sure the water and sewer can be delivered, how be delivered, the zoning's right, the wetlands are there. So to get that certification, you've got quite a bit of engineering. And we partnered the Brunswick Golden Isles Airport certified about 600 acres in the airport that is now grad certified. That was a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of engineering, but a lot of time. Wetlands are delineated, cultural resource and found, uh, endangered species have been identified. Somebody can come into the airport, connect to the runway, and start turning dirt in 60 days, which is where we're trying to get with all properties. We bought 1,400 acres of Highway 82 uh, a little over a year. That's been in process to that level of engineering. We spent quite a bit of, all of the engineering's in place. We're now working with the state to certify that property. So we'll have an additional 1,500 acres ready to go. So in total, we've got over 2,000 acres that could be developed completely. Um, some of the other things that we do, we do work with my sites or marginal sites. And we are working a couple of those now, one being the wood preserving stuff on Perry Lane Road. And then lastly, entrepreneurship. We do this by of partnerships with other organizations predominantly. Uh, we do work with the accelerator programs at the Lucas Center. We participate in global entrepreneurship, minority business events, women business events, youth entrepreneurship events. By way of those partnerships and sponsorships, we are getting in front of a lot of entrepreneurs, making sure that we're, we're staying close to those that are trying to create businesses. So that gives the results from this year, but certainly some are very passionate about and engaged in. So with that, those are our six priorities and some of the results from this past year. Any questions? Perfect. Questions or comments from the community? Thank you. Good job, Ryan. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Ryan, you're not going to get away that easy, bro. <laughs> I was just waiting to see if anybody had questions. Get away easy. I just have questions. <laughs> you could have ran out and turned around. Um, first question starting off with, uh, I know Brunswick is 14 odd, some smiles, right? So we're not probably going to attract large developers who need large track land and 
resources and things of that. Or, um, that being said, two quite off of that, uh, what for our economic development department, we will be, you know, continuously building. What are the kind of sized business that Brunswick should be focusing on, whether it's manufacturing or the like? Um, and how do you all integrate into you all's plan at all? Sure. So we we have a property listing availability page on our website that pulls from broker and every national exchange. So what I'm getting at is a lot of that's going to be strained by the property availability. And there's not there's not a lot of industrial product generally in Glen County, a lot of land, not necessarily in Bronx. So I think the big opportunity is probably redevelopment of aging cities. And we're, we're happy to have that conversation. It's always worked really well with Miss Regina and the previous staff and look forward to working with the staff as well. No, and that, I think that goes to one of the other things that I wanted to say is I know uh, you all are probably continuously having to with partners in Atlanta or around the state track uh, large uh, businesses and manufacturers down here uh, to the tune um, that we involved in Atlanta, especially on things like historical redevelopment tax credits that allow businesses to continue to grow uh, here in the area. How important is that for you all is something you feel like we should continue to be engaged in? Absolutely. Every little bit helps. And certainly those who had tax credits are a big part of most redevelop redevelopment plan. So uh, I, absolutely, you should okay. be involved. And the extent that we can, if that works both ways. Partners can be helpful as well. We're, we're certainly open to that. Okay. Um, the second part, I guess, that I think about is because we have that large footprint, I think thing, you know, I was having a conversation with uh, Dr. Markeisha Butler, mm -hmm. and I think she brought up an amazing point as she was talking about development here in the city was that we should probably be focused not on that attracting manufacturers, but also how do we ensure that we're producing next generation talent to ensure that our um, citizens, whether we are training or training uh, new individuals coming out of high school and college for the jobs of tomorrow. Um, I see the work that you are doing kind of on the workforce um, development side. I guess a question of mine is, how how can open that? How how is a a city to help? I know K twelve education school system probably easily integrated, but how can this government entities, both city and county? Um, in the in the second piece of that question, how do we start to get citizens connected to those next generation jobs that are at Hyundai, um, Gulfstream? I think we have a, a citizenry that almost met and think outside of a 30 minute bubble comes to job opportunity. So how can we uh, stretch that bubble out? Well, I, I think your point's well taken. We've got a limit rate of 2.6%, right? So either we've got to figure out how to more of our people into, into work that have decided to, to not be in the force. Um, we've got to do people or we've got to grow our kids K through 12 and get them to understand that they have to leave to get a good job. Gulfstream needs right now. Willenius Wilhelmsen's hired 350 to 150 more. The ILA is hiring as fast as they can. I mean, there's a thousand jobs available right now. We got 1400 people that are unemployed, completely unemployed. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to grow somehow. And I think city could certainly be a big solution housing problem that we have right now. Um, not everybody wants to live west of 95, and those that come in are looking for a downtown, you know, somewhere with some character. I think that could be a, a big relief with valve for some of these companies that are attracting people. That's and that kind of leads my last thing. We have been working here at the city upwards of about two years, um, on trying to out, uh, how can we bring affordable transportation to the city of Brunswick. Uh, really, we want to work to bring affordable transportation to Glenning because I think we know to be a first-rate city and county and to be uh, a strong area, but it's also tourism, uh, kids using all parts of the sure. city and county. We have to find some way uh, to bring in transportation. I was just wondering, if, could you talk about the importance of some kind of transportation solution building it out in the city? Yeah, we do, we do hear that, that transportation and childcare. 
the two big issues, impediments that people find that want it. Um, please don't look at city county boundaries. Um, when, when they come to town, they're in Brunswick. The sign going up above Bucky's is going to say Brunswick. People from the outside looking in or looking at the entire area, and it doesn't matter if they're the county of Island or St. Simon's. I mean, it's, it, they're going to look at it similarly, especially when you're putting a business on the ground. So we've, we've got to figure out a way to help people move freely uh, in the community. And, and I think the work that's been done on the public transportation is, is well needed. And well I appreciate you, man. Any other questions or comments? Just a piggyback question. Um, uh, talked about the development of aging facilities. What has been the relationship with work with um, cities, uh, economic development department to address and the pursuit of those type of businesses, not industrial side mm -hmm. of businesses, but those businesses that can that have that capacity um, to come into aging facility. What 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 have you pursued uh, back then? So we we've been less engaged in those conversations just by way of the other entities in town that are doing that, the be it the land bank or the URA. Uh, we can be a tool and a and a part in a lot of that. I don't, my board doesn't necessarily see us as being the leader for that, and, and rightfully so, that directed need from the elected officials. So from my personal perspective, we're, we're at people and we would love to have those conversations. The issue with a lot of that type of redefinition is generally you're just going to have to do it speculatively. I mean, it's very difficult to engage in redevelopment on an older facility to take some length of time and have somebody that's going in at the end. You, you really someone's going to have to put money into it without knowing who's going to go there, unfortunately. But do you see that the space that you all can work with the economic development? Absolutely. The city has got to engage the pursuit of. We, we, would, we would appreciate the conversation and certainly be engaged. Anyone else? Thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. We are thankful for you being a city resident. Yes. For calling Brunswick home. And, and we love that. We appreciate you, bro. Oh, we will now move on to uh, number three uh, donations uh, for the Glen Brunswick Memorial Hospital. We will now open that for comments or motions. Mr. Mayor. Mr. I would like to um, start by nominating one of our the nominees. Make a move. Yes, ma'am. Um, I move that we nominate Dr. Kathy Slate Chip to serve as one of our nominations. Nominee. One. Second. We have a first and second before we take a vote. Uh, Dr. Slaychip here. Ms. Slaychip, if you could come to the front, please. Did I say doctor? <laughs> okay. Every doctor. Let me say doctor. Good evening. Good evening. I, I wanted to bring it because each individual that we knocked out want to give each of them uh, a champ beat. So, uh, Dr. Slaychip, is there anything you want to uh, say about the position, why you would like to serve, so we could have that further? Okay. I don't have anything prepared, but Brunswick at home. Um, I, I like to be able to say that uh, the things that I've accomplished here as a care provider have been from basically from my hard work. But I have to admit that. I have, I have to give the credit to my mother. Um, she was a strong uh, person in this city, and she was a social worker. She worked for DFAX, and in our home, um, putting out in our home, there was always, she worked with um, protective services, child protective services. So back in the 60s, um, there were always other people, children in our home. I, I came from a, an environment of taking care of people. And just from her example that I, I tried to follow, basically. Now, 
um, nursing has been my career the last 40 plus years. And I've accomplished for the most part things that I have set out to accomplish. I opened a, a primary care clinic here for underserved population and ran it for 10 years until coastal community had a need population of people that I was taking care of. So we came to agreement and it was a good agreement. It continued the, the dream that I always had providing care to people who were underserved. I have, um, I have assisted other providers in opening clinics for underserved populations. So that population of people are, is, is sort of my focus. And the opportunity to be on the hospital authority would be another opportunity to work for that group of people here in the community. Um, the care of this community's health has, has my life. I love what I do. I'm uh, semi-retired now. So I have a little more time to do some of those other things that I had hoped to accomplish at some point in time. And this is, to me, would be a, a good fit. I, I care about this community. I care about the health of this community. I know where the problems are. I know I have different ideas as to what could help, what could benefit the community as far as health is concerned. So it would be a privilege for me to continue to offer uh, my service uh, to this community as uh, being a part of the Hospital Authority Board. Dr. Slaychip, mm -hmm. thank you for previous service and thank you for uh, your mothers and your family's work in our community. We, we thank you for your long lag and long standing care uh, for all. Uh, we have a first and a second. Those in favor show by the usual sign of aye. 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 All those opposed the same here. Dr. Slay Chip is put forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We Mr. will open it for another motion. The mayor, I'd like to nominate Mrs. Beverly Floyd Lewis as one of our nominees to present us to serve on the board. I support her. Wonderful. Ms. Lewis, can you sit the front for me, please? And I do give a second to that. Ma'am, we have a first and a second. And Commissioner Roll is obtaining out of relation. I just want to give you the same opportunity, Ms. Lewis. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. I do have a tendency to speak rapidly. However, tonight I'm going to try to speak it a little slower so everybody understands what I'm saying and hear it. I moved here 32 years ago from Savannah, Georgia, coming from AT&T Communications. I retired after serving 30 and a half years with the telecommunications company. I have been affiliated with the YMCA, the CASA, the uh, HealthyGlenn.com, they're no functioning, and I currently serve as the vice chair of the County Board of Health. My husband and I own own the Brunswick Funeral Home, which has been in existence since 1929. I have a pulse on the community. I care about the community. I interact with most of the people in the city in one form or another as it relates to showing compassion and care and concern when it comes to family issues. I often speak with people who have a concern about Lynn County, uh, Hospital, Southeast Georgia Hospital, and the focus is wondering whether there's a for them or whether their health concerns are considered. I feel like if I am on the hospital authority, I bring that component whereby I have of the community. I can express their concerns. I can make sure that I'm available to make sure that their concerns are recognized. I agree and I along with the mission and the values that the housing of the brain. However, the vision where they talk about it being the hospital where people would think of their go-to hospital for them. I feel like I can't help in that endeavor because when people have health issues, concerns, you sometimes hear them think about going to Savannah 
or Jackson, my focus would help those understand and realize that South, Southeast Georgia health system can be a facility that they can readily go to understanding their health issues and concern and passion would be exemplified by people who are employed at Southeast Georgia Health System. So I focus in wanting to be on the authority to see that I can help bring that vision they have to fruition when we'll automatically think about health concerns that are going to a facility, Glenn County, Southeast Georgia would come to mind. They don't have to buy Savannah, which I'm a native of Savannah, you know, and my focus is there, but I have lived here for 32 years. So hopefully when that comes to mind, it would automatically say, you know what, I don't have to take, I don't have to think about where I want to go. It's Southeast Georgia Health System have me or my concern at heart. And the, uh, house, the uh, housing authority, the hospital authority would make sure and ensure those things, those issues of concerns or handle by ensuring that their, their values and their mission is adhered to. Thank you. I'm going to speak to you all, and hopefully I know I can bring something to the authority. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. We also want to thank you and your husband's service to our community. It was good to recognize him this year. This year is Martin Luther King Jr. Mark. Um, as a stalwart and a cornerstone of our community. So we thank you for your hard work. We thank him for his legacy and leadership as well. We have a first and a second for Miss All Those in Favor, show by the usual sign of aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes and Miss Lewis is forward. We are now open for our motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move to nominate um, Dr. Rhonda Waller as our third nominee to the Good Brunswick Memorial Hospital Authority. Dr. Waller, can you please come to the front for me? Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Waller. Okay, I guess I have the, the same privilege. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes ma'am, please. Oh, go ahead. Uh, William, is the mic turned up or technology? Is it turned up loud enough? That, that's as loud as it goes. I got to speak directly in. Thank you. I have to start directly into the mic. Yes, okay. ma'am. I did for something, but I'm going to speak from that. So I've been a resident of Brunswick for almost three years. I thought I'd come to Brunswick and sit still. Um, but what I've learned is a servant leader never sits still. Um, I thought I was retiring. I'm of retirement age, but that was my premise for escaping Atlanta and coming here to Brunswick. Um, my life, life's work been in maternal and child health. Um, health equity is important to me. Workforce development is even more important to me. Uh, what I've learned since being here in Brunswick is that there's a place for all of us to do the work in the service of the community. Community health is extremely important to me. I started in Washington, D.C. Um, as an executive director of a nonprofit organization focused on maternal and child health, um, particularly a decreasing infant mortality. Um, through the years, and that in some years ago, through the years I've made the transition from nonprofit to go contracting. And so I'm now managing director of child health initiatives for health solutions at Bazell US, which is a global company um, that focuses on training, technical assistance, workforce development, public health um, across the globe. Um, usually we look away from home for solutions um, and for the trouble that health often brings. Um, I find it we. Um, in Bruns, uh, and some of it is, I, I heard, um, I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember, didn't remember her name, but I've, I've heard the, um, the inferences of uh, concern by the community about the public health system, about the hospital association. I've heard great things from both people who frequent the hospital and 
from the staff who serve the hospital. I've gone to the hospital and had services there. Um, Brunswick is not different from a lot of other these uh, actually some that are larger than Brunswick. Some of the same inequities exist here. Um, and I would like to, to be a part of the solution. You know, we can stand and complain. Um, we can applaud and say it could be better. Um, but if we don't have a hand in making a difference, then there's no need to sit back and complain. So um, part of my acceptance of, you know, you please submit an application is the that as a servant, I cannot assist and I cannot allow um, challenges to come away without responding to them. See this too as um, not just service challenge, to do better um, in my community and to be a part of solution. That's really good for not having nothing written down. That so just had to, you know, very impressive. Something. <laughs> um, we we thank you for your service and honestly your your expertise in choosing our community, Doctor Waller. We have a first. Do we have a second? Second. Here the first and the second. All those in favor, show by the sign of I. Aye. Aye. All those same. Hearing none. Doctor Waller is well. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I will talk a little bit quickly about the process. Uh, for us as a city, we put forward uh three names in the. Brunswick Memorial Hospital Authority um, then chooses from those uh, that we put forward. So we put forward three uh, very strong, very capable uh, candidates. So thank you for putting you all's names forward. I want a, uh, a quick moment about we had other names on the list, which is uh, Dr. Jack Martin, Dr. Martin, and uh, as well as former Mayor Cornell Harvey, uh, two individuals who have given to this city. And we thank them for uh, their work in this city, but also their ability to come forward and give of themselves. Um, this is by far a free job and a lot of phone calls with no thank you. Um, so to even put your name forward, we are, we are extremely thankful. Uh, we are also uh, extra thankful to Miss Martin for letting him uh, work with his wife for so long. Uh, we know we, we kept her some late night. And she had some tough phone calls, tough emails and text messages and everything else. But um, she led up here with us and we were thankful always uh, her leadership. Last thing I want to say, this is uh, filling the hired seat of Woody Woodside, um, someone who has given uh, a lot to our community and a lot to people individually uh, in our community and meant so much not only to Brunswick as a city which he called home uh county as an area but also to our entire state so we are for sure that the names that we put forward uh will continue to build upon uh legacy so thank you all so much thank you thank you very much with that we will now move on to uh items to be considered for proof uh, approval of the June 8th, 2024 regular regular scheduled meeting minutes, any addendums or fractions or anything that needs to be changed. City Clerk Atkinson, all good. Anything from the DOSC? With that, we'll open our motion. Mr. Mayor, make a motion that we approve our June 8th regular scheduled meeting minutes as reported. Here in the first, do I hear second? Here in the first and the second, all those in favor show by aye. 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 All those opposed the same, hearing none, the motion passes. We'll now move on to number five. Consider, consider approval of approval of a contract <laughs> for construction of the Martin Luther King Altama Bicycle Corridor on Martin Luther King Boulevard between Crenshaw and Gloucester Street. Good evening. Good evening. As you mentioned, the item has to do with the MLK out bicycle corridor. Um, you know, there's currently a trail door runs along 4th Avenue and then turn runs up north along MLK from 4th to Prince Street. Um, that was constructed several years ago. Um, and then about two years ago, through the map, we completed a ability study for the rest of that MLK Altama corridor 
from, from Prince all the way to Chapelton Road to look at the, the feasibility of bicycle pedestrian trail along MLK and Altama all through the city and beyond all the way out at sea. Um, we're still working with the county to try to look for ways to advance that study beyond the console into the design phase and ultimately construction. Um, looking at different sharing avenues, different financing, use grants, those kind of things. So we don't have anything on the table right now, but um, we're looking at options. But uh, as we're doing that, kind of saw the segment from to Gloucester is sort of low fruit, if you will. We've got that large area of right away there along MLK. Um, so we can took it upon ourselves to design it in-house um, and put that out to be and kind of move that forward so that as we do advance the project um, going forward, larger project that would, you know, obviously short the distance, shorten the amount that we needed to fund and, and prepare. For. So, um, like I said, um, completed that design. We put the project out to bid. We, um, Received three bids on this, which are included there in your, in your packet. Um, first of those was from Gutter Professionals at a cost just over two twenty-five thousand um, dollars. We went through their bid, their package submitted. Um, you know, they, they submitted everything we asked for in the bid. We get some references. Um, there. Um, Jessup, Wayne County, we talked folks up there. Um, Planet, they asked us to check a couple more references. We did, we talked with GDOT. They've done a good GDOT work. GDOT spoke very highly of them. Um, and other contractors around, they have worked both as a sub and as a contractor for um, Seaboard, specifically being one of those. They, they spoke very well of them as well. So, um, Asked for approval to move forward with a construction contract for that MK, um, Altama bicycle trail on, from Prince to Gloucester. Um, you have kind of a layout of it in your packet, some diagrams in your packet. I've also printed some here uh, for the public to see on the front here. It will be very similar layout to the segment from Ocean to Prince. Um, we've got a large area from the curb over to the existing telephone poles or utility poles there. Um, we'll work it work it in that area. Uh, we don't want just a straight shot. We want to kind of a little meandering there, but uh, so we'll, we'll get with the contractor and kind of lay it out once we get everything to go. But um, drawings here kind of show roughly what layout will be. Um, and we'll continue up to Gloucester. We'll stop short of Gloucester Street because we don't want to get into G dot permitting kind of thing as part of this contract. We'll say for the larger overall joint project roads. Don't stay out of out G dot right away. So um so that's it. It's, it's really a pretty simple, straightforward project. Um but I'll be to answer any questions that you have. And um I have Mr. Derek Franzen of Urban gutter professionals here if you have any questions for them as well. Thank you for that. Thank thank them for being here. Well, any questions or comments uh from the committee? Um, Gerald, maybe by chance, in addition to speaking of references and additional references that you um spoke to who gave them comments for curb and gutter professionals, did you actually see finished product pictures of their work? I've seen some work that they have um, in progress right now. Um, so they, they have some local projects that they're working on right now. Some local projects? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So they're working on the project out on Canal Road. There, there's a widening out as well as a roundabout, which they are involved in. So working on the roundabout project at um, 99 and 17, I know for sure. Um, there's subs in one and prime in one. I don't know if can tell you the arrangement of that a little more better than I can. 
Okay. But I was just curious. Thank you. That's yeah. Garrow, so these are four inch all the way, all the way down, or? Yes, this would be a, a four inch thick um, concrete sidewalk, ten feet wide, um, four inches thick, which is typical for sidewalk or trail of this type. There is one section where we cross a driveway that will go into the lower end of the Oak Grove Cemetery. That segment, thirty feet, will be six inches, so that doesn't damage it as vehicles drive across, but that will be four inches. Gotcha. And the design, it looks like, I know where it's been before we get to um, Church Street, but it looks like a square. Is it a fad then? Is that? No, that uh, just, it's a little drawn a little. We'll probably put a smaller, smaller area there, probably not as big as that shown, but just somebody might as walk in, they can kind of turn around. Maybe okay. it's there for now, because we don't know how long it's going to be till we get to the project. Right. Underway, maybe maybe a bench there if people want to sit. Whatever. Just sort of a little turnaround. Okay. It's drawn a little bigger on that drawing than it would probably be. Yeah, or maybe we think about you know rounding the edges or something that would again facilitate right. a, a turnaround or something like that. We're we're not tied into what. Okay, perfect. All right. Good, good mm -hmm. stuff. Well, I'm excited for this project and appreciate your hard work and. and any additional comments or questions? What, one other thing is I think, um, and I appreciate Chicago Golden Isle's contribution to this plan, um, but I think down the road, I think we as a city look to uh, acquire additional funding, less grants or other things to add other amenities to this trail, including potential water fountains and shade trees and lighting for security purposes as we see the computing board. But I don't think this design precludes them doing any of that stuff in the future. No, in fact, kind of what we had in mind is is situating between the curb and the utility pole so that we could add some trees in there without being against the road or being under the lines and yeah, maybe some some benches on there and some, like you say, some lighting and. Perfect. Any additional questions or comments? Um, I will say I'm thankful. Uh, for this, but I think some of the areas you go through, seeing you know kids riding their bike, walking, they are extremely close to traffic. As people park on the side of the road, you would naturally probably be walking in. Sidewalks are also very uh, kind of caved in in certain point, dangerous and as you as you move through there. So to have a smoothed out path through this area of our um, is extremely important. Um, Commissioner Roll brings up a great point that we will in the future be doing some work on. We understand at least in this little area, probably a little further, there seems to be uh, a continued problem with stray dogs. Um, so even this being kind of down a median may help without being very close to home that dogs come out of or yards that they stay in. Um, and so we are happy with us moving forward on this. Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree. Mayor Pro Tem says in some areas, sidewalks aren't available themselves. Having this area provides for that. Um, uh, one question, I think you mentioned it. Um, ADA, it'll have the ramp off and things. Yes, like sir. That. At each at each road crossing, um, we'll we'll have a stripe crossing across the roadway, but then each side have the detectable strips and perfect. There. Perfect. Uh, no comments or questions. I'll I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize you to sign a contract with Curb and Gutter Professionals in the amount of. $225,190.68 for the construction of the OK Altama Bicycle Quarter Park from Prince Street to Gloucester Street. Second. Hearing a first and a second, all those are shown by the sign of aye. 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 All those are the same. Hearing none, the motion is passed. Thank Director you. Alves. We'll now move on to number six, considerable resolution number 204-07. Declaring action for the great American cleanup. We have all that. 
There we go. <laughs> Leah, there you go. Yes, of course. Come on. Oh, my God. It's so entertaining. <laughs> like me to say speak to it for yes okay. please please so keep america beautiful each year celebrates three months with the american cleanup that we all participate in we have a lofty goal in time for his 250th birthday between now and july 4th 2026 the goal is to remove over 25 billion pieces of litter in public spaces from sea to shining sea. Mm. And I brought a quarter of our volunteers here today who spend a lot of time with their sleeves rolled up, getting muddy, removing litter from the marshes, from public parks, from public spaces all throughout the community. And Keep America Beautiful is just to local governments and communities to re-energize their citizen citizenry and to recommit to cleaner and more beautiful communities. So this is more symbolic nature, but there are communities from coast to coast adopting similar resolutions and proposals and propositions and whatever the words are. But um, it's just renewing our commitment with Keep Golden Isles Beautiful leading the charge and have a whole lot of partners and people helping us along. That is wonderful. I, I would say, uh, while this is ceremonial, the work that you all do surely isn't. Uh, the things that you all pick up and the ways that you keep community clean uh, really is smeared by all of us. Um, and we know uh, as a city commission that we have certain areas of our city and certain parts of our city. It's going to take some work on our end uh, to really ensure that we keep Brunswick beautiful, keep Golden Isles beautiful, and to ensure that we invest uh, in the mission that you all, your your time uh, and your dollars, uh, and your tears and your work and your hands and that into. So we are we are beyond full uh, for you all and what you do for the city of Brooklyn. With that, I will read uh, this resolution, one that will be signed and sent over so you all can put it wherever your resolutions. I don't know what drawer she puts them in. We, we appreciate it. So uh, we're as Brunswickians are dedicated to enhancing the beauty and cleanliness of our community. And whereas one must recognize the importance of preserving environment and fostering civic pride among our residents. And whereas the product of developing clean and green spaces is an improved quality of life, residents, visitors, and wildlife. Whereas through Keep Golden Isles Beautiful and a bit of Keep America Beautiful, and their great American cleanup initiative, restoration and resiliency is paired with an engaged committee to achieve revitalized spaces. And whereas the city of Brunswick gets to assisting Keep Golden Isles Beautiful annually by organizing three community cleanups to inspire citizens of all ages to work together to litter from our streets, parks, ways, and public safety. Organized to reduce, reuse, result experiences that champion responsible waste disposal and resource conservation. And hold one event to celebrate our process and achievements. Now, therefore, be it all that the mayor and commissioners of the city of Brunswick do hereby declare, support, and assist with Keep Golden Beautiful and the Great American Cleanup Initiative. Participation in this initiative will make Brunswick an example of environmental stewardship as we work together to make our community cleaner, greener, and enhance beauty for generations to come. Residents and guests are urged to participate in all corresponding activities. Yeah. Yes, please, 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 please. <laughs> Um, thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. <laughs> And we have. I just want to say thank you to each one of you before you leave. Um, it's about the 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 love and care, the TLC that you all lend to the city. 
But most of all, it's about sweat equity that you put in. You put in that sweat equity to our city and to our county, and we so appreciate it. That goes it goes much further than just words. You put time in in that sweat equity, and so thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on to eight, which is considerable of transit memorandum of understanding with Glen County. That is correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, appreciate um, the ability to present to you tonight. It is a an MU that we've been working with the county on for uh, a couple months. Uh, if you all don't know all of the behind the scenes on this, it is something as the city is moving forwards, putting out an RFP to uh, receive submissions for possible transit services to be provided within the city in certain unincorporated portions of Glen County. Um, we've been working with a um, our consultant and through Georgia Department of Transportation to make all, kind of all of our ducks in a row before the RFP is sent out. One of the items that Georgia Department of Transportation identified is that because uh, the proposed transit map is going to extend on the city's corporate limits into the unincorporated parts of Glen County. GDOT wants to see an MOU uh, between the city and county that is simply addressing the permissive use or the permissive um, allowance to allow the city to provide transit services in the unincorporated portion of the view. So while there are lots of terms and words on uh, this topic, that is the extent of the document. It is a um, request from the city to turn into an MOU, MOU with the county, essentially just uh, understands and blesses the cities of the, if we're gonna put the, on this transit service program to allow those lines to run out of the city that's into the county. Um, so if you look through the agreement, if you wish to, uh, it, it, that is the crux of it. No real frills. To, so what will happen is, ideally, if this is placed and it's going before the county on Thursday night for the hopefully their approval, uh, once we have this in place, we would have the green light from GDOT to issue our RFP, and then those proposals would come through. I'm sure Jim uh, Hunter will likely be presenting, bringing them before the commission. I think we're going to also with the county on how those proposals come in and look like, but this is sort of that triggering event that would let us just send the RFP out. It doesn't bind anybody anything. It's just to, uh, from the county to the city. Thank you for that. Questions or comments from the commission? One question. <clears throat> um, I was wondering if it has to be written or where it says um, micro tra micro transit service for the city within portions of unincorporated Glenview with a flex bus route to St. Louis Island. Do we have to include any about Jeff or just asking if it's No, because interestingly enough, um, that's a state of property. Yes. Okay. That is that is the indication that we've received from GDOT. I know with the employment. Something that John and I have talked about. Um, the MOU, would, if we needed one, we would need one between the city and Jekyll. Commissioner Roll, you you literally asked a question. That was the, the quote that I had. And I was like, I wonder you hit it. And that was it. That was it. No, I, I know I want to give a shit. This has been a lot of work, long time coming. Uh, still more to do, but there's still a whole lot to do. And I want to give a shout out to the BATS committee. So that no one probably in general understanding of government uh understands what's what that is i'm actually what does it even stand for the brunswick area transportation there you go the the bats committee has been working tirelessly for a very long time this is not some by night we decided to do transportation way it has been studied it is studied by people by leaders in our city such Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Savy, others, um, Commissioner Martin sat on that board or sits on that board, uh, sat on that board for for quite a while. And this is the 
uh, work of a lot of individual people coming to fruition. And we understand that this is the first step, um, and we still got a lot of work to do to get things running here in Brunswick, but it, it is very, it is a very mental uh, and real first to us getting it done. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's put some work in. One step. Mr. Corey, is there a time frame on this MOU? Does it expire and is it specific to this RFP or can this MOU, if this RFP doesn't work out, are good to continue to explore maybe other additional transportation options with this MOU? So I think it's a good question because it is somewhat tied to RFP. If you look on page three under term. Uh, the terminal agreement shall be from the date last by the parties and shall continue in until time the city makes final approval of a plan submitted to RFP to operate the proposed transportation services. And so I think with that being stated, it is into this RFP in the sense that, uh, well, I guess I'd say that it's, it remains in perpetuity until time as the city um selects one of those um in the event that the city declines that the plan it would terminate i mean it would no longer be a necessity so my thought behind that question is that again we we don't know what the responses would be to the rfp i don't want to have to back to the county if we decide to modify an RFP understood and put it back out no i don't that would I, I think that as it's stated in if no plan was selected, the it would terminate upon the final vote of abandonment. So, the city vote to abandon would actually be the triggering of termination. And um, I would, the point of the selection of the plan is we need this up front. And then once the plan is elected, there will be a separate matter IGA between the city and the county how that those services go forward. Would be. If we decided, hey, we don't want the vacation at all. Yeah, upon a formal vote by the mission. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll open it for a moment. I move, Mr. Mayor, that we approve this memorandum of understanding between the city of Brown and Glen County. Hearing a first, do a hear second. Second. Hearing a first and a second, all those in favor, show out of aye. Aye. All those opposed, to hearing none. The motion passes. We'll now open it for a motion to adjourn for the session. Yes. We have the matters of real estate personnel to discuss. Real estate and personnel. Open it for a motion. I move that we um, adjourn for executive session. For personnel in real estate. Here. First, do a hear second. Okay. Hearing a first and second. Those in favor, show by aye. 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 All those same, hearing none, we are adjourned for executive session.